When we hear about space rockets, we already know one thing for sure. They are extremely hard to build, but what most people don't realize is this, the engine is by far the hardest and most expensive part of the entire rocket. In many launch vehicles, the engines alone can account for up to 70% of the total cost. Think about that for a moment. If a rocket costs $100 million, the engines alone can cost $70 million. And even after spending that much money, there is still a high chance the engine fails during development. That's exactly why many space companies avoid building engines altogether. Instead, they buy engines from other companies that already went through years of failure, testing, and massive losses. This is why United Launch Alliance buys engines. This is why smaller launch companies rely on outside suppliers. Building engines from scratch is risky, slow, and brutally expensive. But SpaceX chose a completely different path. And from the very beginning, they decided to build everything themselves, including the hardest part of all, the engine. Their most important engine family today, as we all know, is the Raptor engine. Raptor is not just another rocket engine. It uses liquid methane and liquid oxygen and runs on a full-flow staged combustion cycle, one of the most complex engine designs ever attempted. Before SpaceX, no company had ever flown an engine like this. Many experts believed it was simply too difficult to make reliable. But SpaceX needed high power, high efficiency, and full reusability. And this was the only design that could deliver all three. The first version of this engine was Raptor 1. Raptor 1 produced about 185 tons of thrust, which was already very high for a methane engine. Its combustion chamber pressure exceeded 300 bar, far higher than most engines in operation at the time. But Raptor 1 was extremely difficult to work with. It was heavy, complex, and filled with exposed plumbing. Early versions were sensitive to heat and vibration, and small issues could shut down an entire test campaign. Raptor 1 engines were slow to build, expensive, and not very reliable. Instead of slowly refining Raptor 1, SpaceX made a bold move and redesigned the engine almost completely. This led to Raptor 2. With Raptor 2, thrust jumped to around 230 tons, a massive increase. At the same time, SpaceX simplified the engine. Many external pipes were removed. Components were integrated directly into the engine structure. The design became cleaner and more compact. Raptor 2 was more powerful, easier to inspect, cheaper to build, and more stable during operation. Even so, it still weighed around 1,600 kilograms and was far from perfect. But Raptor 2 achieved something critical. SpaceX figured out how to build these engines at scale. Once the design stabilized, production reached roughly one engine per day. That alone was unheard of for engines this powerful. This is what allowed Starship to begin flying early test missions with dozens of engines. The reason Raptor is so different comes down to its design choices. Methane burns cleaner than traditional rocket fuel, which reduces internal damage and makes reuse easier. The full-flow staged combustion cycle means both the fuel and the oxidizer are fully gasified before combustion, improving efficiency and control. The downside is extreme complexity. Raptor operates at pressures and temperatures that destroy most materials. Making it reliable took years of testing and failure. This is why Raptor 2 was such an important step forward. Now SpaceX is preparing to fly Raptor 3. Raptor 3 pushes thrust even higher, to about 280 tons per engine. But power is not the most important change. The biggest improvement is simplicity. Raptor 3 removes even more fragile components. The engine looks cleaner, tighter, and more integrated than any previous version. Many of the parts that caused problems in early Raptors no longer exist. The engine mass dropped to around 1,525 kilograms, down from Raptor 2. That may not sound like much, but when you have 33 engines on one booster, every kilogram matters. With Raptor 3, Starship's Super Heavy booster produces around 9,240 tons of thrust at liftoff. That already makes Starship the most powerful rocket ever built. For comparison, the Saturn V produced about 3,400 tons of thrust. Starship already delivers nearly three times that amount. But SpaceX is not stopping there. 
Now, even before Raptor 3 officially enters service, SpaceX is already looking ahead. Musk has openly hinted that the next major step is coming, and that step is what many now refer to as Raptor 4. The existence of this future engine comes directly from Musk himself. During a discussion at Starbase, he mentioned that a future version of Raptor could reach around 330 tons of thrust at liftoff. While he did not officially name this engine, the numbers alone tell the story. Jumping from roughly 280 tons on Raptor 3 to 330 tons is not a small tweak. That is an increase of about 50 tons per engine, far too large to be explained by a minor upgrade or a simple variant. At that point, SpaceX would be moving into an entirely new generation of engine design. A Raptor producing 330 tons of thrust would represent roughly a 17% increase over Raptor 3. That may not sound dramatic at first, but when applied across Starship, the impact becomes enormous. Starship's Super Heavy Booster uses 33 Raptor engines at liftoff. Multiply 330 tons by 33 engines, and you get a total liftoff thrust of around 10,890 tons. That equals roughly 24 million pounds of force pushing the vehicle off the launch mount. This number matters because it crosses a major milestone. With Raptor 4, SpaceX would officially exceed 10,000 tons of liftoff thrust, a goal Musk has talked about for years. By comparison, even with Raptor 3, Starship sits at around 9,240 tons of thrust, already the most powerful rocket ever built, but still below that threshold. Musk has explained why this milestone is important by comparing Starship to the Saturn V. Saturn V produced about 3,400 tons of thrust at liftoff. Starship already delivers more than twice that amount today. Once Raptor reaches the 300-ton class and beyond, Starship moves close to three times the thrust of Saturn V. This is not just symbolic. Higher thrust gives SpaceX more flexibility during ascent, stronger margins for heavy payloads, and greater room to improve reusability without sacrificing performance. But Raptor 4 is not just about raw power. Musk stated that future Raptor engines, especially vacuum-optimized versions, could reach around 380 seconds of specific impulse. That number is extremely high for a methane engine and has major implications. Higher specific impulse means the engine uses propellant more efficiently. This directly translates into more payload capacity without increasing tank size. Raptor 3 vacuum engines are projected to generate around 306 tons of thrust. If the sea level Raptor 4 reaches 330 tons, a vacuum version could reasonably exceed 350 tons of thrust. Achieving this would likely require a larger nozzle, optimized for vacuum expansion, higher combustion chamber pressure, or both. SpaceX has already demonstrated chamber pressures far beyond what most engines operate at today, and there is little indication they have reached a hard limit. Another defining feature of Raptor 4 is expected to be further simplification. From Raptor 1 through Raptor 3, SpaceX has consistently removed fragile parts, reduced plumbing, and integrated components directly into the engine structure. Raptor 3 already shows this philosophy clearly, with a much cleaner and more compact design compared to earlier versions. Looking ahead, SpaceX is expected to push this approach even further. There is growing speculation that future Raptors could move toward a near-monolithic design, where major components are integrated into a single structural unit. Whether that exact design appears or not, the direction is clear. Fewer parts mean fewer joints, fewer leak paths, and fewer failure points. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.